So far we've been talking about choices over different things without thinking about the possibility that those things might involve uncertainty. It might be that when I make a choice, there's only some probability that it'll be as tasty and delicious as I hoped it would be. Many of the choices we make have elements of uncertainty. So now, should we just say anything? Should we say we can have any preferences uh, over a choice? Remember the escargot and the steak and the salmon. Should we say that, should we say that, that a steak that's really good with probability 91% and a steak that's really good with probability 91.5% are completely different things. I could have totally distinct preferences over that relative to a, to a salmon with, with probability that's good with probability 10% and a salmon that's good with probability 90%. Could I prefer a salmon that that's only good with probability 10% to a salmon that's good with probability 90%? Or should we impose some structure here? But basically, we were just thinking about preferences over certainties. Now let's talk about uncertainties. All right, but first I want to do some definition. We have to define what it is that we're talking about. Okay, we have to have a notation for it. And I'm taking the notation here from our famous Osborne and Rubenstein textbook. All right. So what do we got? We got Z. Set of prizes. All right. The Spider Man costume, a million dollars, a goat. Spider Man costume and a goat, five dollars. Maybe there's some probability of any of these. What's behind the door? There was a show where you had to look, you had to say, What door do you want? Let's make a deal. What's behind the door? Sometimes it was a goat, sometimes it was a really nice prize. So we have the set of all prizes, Z. And we're going to talk about a lottery. We're going to talk about a function P. Think of it as a probability. P says, P takes any element in Z. P is a function that maps from the set of all these possible combinations of prizes in Z. You know, the Spider-Man costume and the goat, just the goat. P is a function that maximize, maps from this to a real number. Just as I think about it as assigning a probability to any of these, let's say for now, finite number of elements. And maybe zero to the other elements. All right, what do we do about that? All right, so we have elements little z and z. And we have P, P of little z for each element z in the big Z, big Z. And then, of course, something special about probability functions is, well, oh, did I say R? Well, it's also got to be positive, or it's not, cannot be zero. It cannot be negative. Probabilities are not negative. You guys know this stuff. Probabilities... Sum to one. Something's got to happen, they tell us. All right. And there's something called the support. That's the things that have positive probability. All right. And then what are we going to do next? We're going to talk about the set of all possible lotteries. We're going to call that. So we have the set of all the prizes or combinations of prizes. And then we have... And then we have a lottery. Each lottery is this function that says, all right, we've got a half probability of a goat, a 25% probability of a goat and a million dollars, and a 25% probability of just a million dollars. I forgot about this Spider-Man costume. All right, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, we're going to say, okay, there's a lot of possible lotteries we could have. There could be any number of different possible probabilities adding up to one over, over this set. And we're going to think about all of them. We're going to call all of the set of all possible lotteries L of big Z.
and we're going to talk about we're going to characterize a certain prize we're going to character or a certain outcome or uh, a lottery that yields a prize with a certain outcome when I want to say a lottery yields a prize with a prize Z with a certain outcome I'm going to put that in square brackets So this is when I say this, this probability one of outcome Z, little Z, I'll put that Z in square brackets. And then what about a lottery that has a different probability for each prize? Well, here's the notation I use, okay? The notation we're gonna use, suppose the lottery yields the prize. So in other words, suppose we have a lottery such that P of ZK is equal to a, or sorry, alpha k uh, for for k one to big k. All right. So for every prize, z k, z one, z two, up to z big k. The probability of that prize is alpha k. Well, then I'm going to notate this as follows. I'm going to notate this as alpha 1. Put this dot in here. So the probability dot outcome z1. But there are more elements. Now, what do I do to specify that there's all these elements? I could make it I have a bunch of commas. No, I'm going to use this thing here. I'm going to use a circle with a plus sign in the middle. Okay, and then I'll talk about the probability of the second element, dot, second element, Z2. Continue this all the way up to the final element, K. Okay, make sure you understand this notation. All right, for instance, if I want to talk about a lottery with a uh, 50 percent chance or let's say a, uh, one third chance of a numeric outcome of zero and one third chance of, of let's say earn let's call it an earnings amount of zero and one third and a two thirds chance of an earnings amount of 10 well then that lottery is going we'll write that as uh, what did I just say one third dot zero plus two thirds dot 10. This would be the lot that lottery that I just was talking about. All right, we got notation. Now we'll move on to other things.